Hey friend, I got another question. This one's from a viewer who calls himself LD. He says, I was curious if you had a list of books you learned these skills from, or was it all at daddy's knee? Your channel is amazing. Exactly the kind of farm I'm trying to replicate. Well, hey, LD. Yes, to answer your question, quite a lot that I have learned was uh, learned from my father, um, my daddy, John L. He told me a lot about tools, just gave me a love for them and uh, how to use them, particularly, you know, hand tools and so forth. But he also, one of the things he did was to instill a real passion for the old ways because uh, as he was growing up, he was born in 1930. And as he was growing up, uh, he's, by the way, he's 93. He just turned 93. He and my mother had their um, 70th wedding anniversary uh, just earlier last week. And his birthday was the week before. And he still gets around, rides his four-wheeler around, uh, uh, rides his tractor, discs his garden and so forth, and, and grows a few things. But he has lived an amazing life. I mean, when he was young, his life, and there's very few people left that remember, uh, especially in the South, no cars uh, before the time where anybody around them had cars. And uh, he and Paul Mack, my grandpa, and his mother, Nanny, uh, they lived about six miles from the main town. And they, they only went to town once a week, and that was in a wagon. And so Daddy has lived an amazing life to where you go from the horse and wagon era to you know the space age era and and beyond into computers and so forth um but one of the things he did was to inspire and instill in me a passion for the old ways and and describing how paul mack used to do things um paul mack died my grandpa died when i was quite young and so i remember him i, I remember him vaguely but i wasn't old enough to ask questions I, you know how he did things i didn't wouldn't have even known what to ask but later as i grew up daddy would tell me the stories about how paul mack would lay off his rows in the garden uh what plows he would use um, how he would do it how he would grow his corn and um, where his farm buildings were how he built them and what you know what room was used for what um, and you know, I remember him talking about how Paul Mack would make shingles or shakes, split shakes with a fro um, for the roof of the of the outbuildings and so forth. And that just, I just love those stories. My father, as he was growing up in the, as he was a teenager, you know, in the, in the late 40s and then on into the 50s, a young married person, it, he went the way of motors. Motors were a new thing. He bought a motor to put on his Whizzer bicycle. And uh, so he, he kind of got away from the horse-drawn era, but I guess it skips a generation. And I, I was just infatuated with that era and not with motors, obviously. <clears throat> I'm a terrible mechanic. So he, he, Daddy really did a lot to uh, instill that passion. And I don't even know if he was trying to. He just, I guess, kind of did it by accident, instill that, that passion in me for all that. Another way I've learned a lot of these old things is from asking questions of that older generation who were at the time slightly older than my father and asking them what they remembered about how their parents did things, whether they were whether men or women, uh, how they did chores around the farm and so forth. Um, and nowadays, though, a lot of those um, a lot of those people have died out. And but when I was a young man and first getting started in my 20s and so forth, a lot of those folks were still around who actually were hands on and doing some of those things. And so uh, take my advice while you've got folks around, ask them questions about your family history and about, you know, uh, things that they remember before they're gone so that you can pass those things on to your kids. Probably one of the most uh, valuable ways that I've learned some of the things I've learned is from reading memoirs uh, of people who have written their life's history, their autobiography or whatever. And, you know, I'm not even talking about famous people that you would recognize. Um, a lot of people sit down um, as they get older and they're in those uh, last stages of life, their last decade or two, and they'll write their life's history. Or, And sometimes they're just trying to preserve it for their own family. 
Uh, when you come across those, they often, especially if they're from rural folks, they can be very, very valuable. And it's almost like a it's almost like a gold mine. You're you're reading through this biography, which is a family account, but you're you're looking for a specific valuable gold nuggets of information. I give you an example. Uh, you you'll be reading along in a memoir, whether it's uh, Civil War area era or you know, early 20th century, and um, this person will write about how they went out every morning um, to stoke the fire in the smokehouse and they're just they're just trying to tell you know maybe right for their kids what they did and and the things they ate but in the process of doing so they'll remember you know we had to do this to keep the fire going in the smokehouse well that's gold information to me and you because something as simple as that and you think about a smokehouse the the whole purpose is to keep a not a fire going you don't want heat but you want smoke smoldering if it gets too hot that can be bad uh, for the meat you don't want it to get too hot and certainly you don't want the fire to go out because then there's no smoke at all it's it's a challenging skill to keep a fire smoldering so that it puts off smoke and not heat well how did they do that you know how how would you do that if you had to go out and do that and in their in these memoirs they'll ex describe sometimes in great detail how they would do these things. And so you're reading along a memoir and you, you find all these gold nuggets and uh, you learn a lot from, and they weren't even trying to teach you that necessarily. They were just trying to relay the story. Those are valuable. And it's really exciting when you read a memoir and you come across a bit of information that fills in gaps that, you know, you may, maybe you had questions about how did they used to do that? And then you'll read it. Go oh, there it is. That's what I was. That's what I've been wondering about all these years. So exciting when you. I love finding that. It's like again. It's like you know finding a diamond in the rough. It's like finding a go finding a gold nugget. And then finally, um, a lot a lot I have learned from book reading, uh, just book skills. But again, the most you know the most important thing is going out and actually doing it. And at some point, you're going to have to get away from the books and actually go out there and start failing uh, and through failing you learn to be successful so but as far as books go I have I have my own library of books but let me tell you something uh, if you're we don't have enough time here to talk about all the books I think are valuable but I'm going to share one with you and you've probably heard of this if not um, I, I can't wait to tell you about this there's a set of books called the Foxfire book uh, started with the Foxfire book. The, the, it's called the Foxfire series now. There's many books. This was a book uh, series that began in, I think, 1966. These books contain series a series of written and recorded accounts of old, the older generation. And if you're talking about writing this in 66 and the people were old then, um, it would have been turn of the century, you know, um, not early 1900s uh, skills and so forth that these settlers are talking about. This was um, began as a high school project in North Georgia, and a, a young high school teacher uh, went into this his classroom and was trying to get these mountain kids interested interested in literature and so forth. And so he armed them with cameras, notepads, uh, tape recorders and said, okay, go out into the countryside, go find your your uncles, your great uncles, your aunts, your grandpa, your grandma, and ask them how they did things, you know, farm skills or, or whatever. So an army of students just disembarked into the mountains um, and asking these uh, people how they did certain things and they recorded it and they actually recorded it verbatim how they said it and that's how it got printed in the word exactly how these old people talked and so forth and so this series has recorded um, some essential skills to country living in a, in a way that really nothing else has ever done and so they called it the foxfire which foxfire is a is a glow-in-the-dark fungus that grows in the in the Smoky Mountains, and that original idea turned into the the Foxfire series. They started with book one. I don't know that they ever had plans to do another one. They thought, well, book one that'll be it'll, that'll cover everything. Well, it didn't. There was so much, so many other things to talk about. All the books are worth having, but if you're uh, if if you're 
choosy with your budget, I recommend especially the first three, uh, volume one, two, and three. A lot of times, I think uh, back in the day, early 70s, they sold that three volume set uh, as a set. And then they started coming out with number four and number five and so forth. I recommend one through three. Those are the most important ones. They have um, some of the main old time skills in them. And then beyond that, number four is good, number five is good, and number nine, if I remember correctly, are my very favorites. They're all worth having. Uh, some of them go into stories, you know, um, uh, old time ghost stories, scary stories, church life, social life, and, and things like that. But there's so many skills to be found in there by the people who were actually grew up for decades doing these things. It's very, very worth having. I'll read you a little excerpt here. And again, like I said, these are written verbatim with apostrophes and everything, the way, uh, you know, we country folk talk. This is uh, on the section on hog killing. It says, if you kill a hog on the new of the moon, slice it and put it in a pan. It'll just blow you till you can't fry the grease out of it hardly. You got to kill it on the right time of the moon. You don't never want to kill it on the new moon. Another said, we'd kill hogs on the full moon or just about the full moon. While the moon was shrinking, the meat would shrink. There'd be a lot of lard and grease if it is on the shrinking of the moon. If it is on the new moon, you wouldn't make much lard and the meat would swell up when you cooked it instead of shrink. You know, things like that. I remember when I was young, uh, a lot of my kinfolks talked exactly like this. It's one of the one of the reasons I'm so uh, drawn to that book is that I feel like I'm with, you know, I feel like I'm six years old again, listening to my aunts and uncles and, and grandma talk or eavesdropping on the, on the party line as my grandma talked to her friends because they talked exactly like that. And so it's like going back in time. And that language is something that, you know, that old time country language is something we're starting to lose these days. You know, these books, again, the Foxfire books are a wealth, a treasure of information. You talk about finding gold nuggets that's one big chunk of gold there but you know even if you didn't want to learn a thing about the farm even if you you know were never going to do or practice any of these skills it's just great great reading um, at the very least there's even a foxfire museum in mountain city georgia the northern part of georgia my wife and i went there when we were young married um, it's the only time i've ever been to the museum it was uh, early 90s, I think, and they have um, some of the artifacts and the, the things that you actually see being built in the book. They have them there in the museum that you can actually look at uh, in there. They, the wagon uh, that was built uh, is actually in there in the, in the museum. It's just a, a fascinating place. You can even order the Foxfire books directly off their website, which again, I highly recommend. LD, I hope that helps. Uh, thank you for writing. Thank you for asking the question, for commenting. And for the rest of you, if you have any question at all you'd like to ask of a farm nature, just put it in the comment section below. And if it's a good question, we'll try to answer it on an upcoming installment of the Farm Hands Companion Q&A show. So until next time, please share these videos with other like-minded people. And I appreciate you watching. We'll talk at you later. Jeffrey Boyd, 4719. There was an old country doctor who was friends with my great, great, great grandfather back in the 1850s, 1870s, who kept a journal and he wrote of my ancestor many times. One of his journal entries spoke of my ancestor keeping bees. This vid brings the story to life. Genius. Oh, well, thanks very much. Oh, thank you.